Great. Okay. So um, thanks very much for, for joining me today, guys. And for anybody that's watching this in recording as well, good morning. Um, I'm going to do a little uh, presentation on grants today, looking at the impact of the general election and what that could mean for your business and how you can access uh, the relevant funding. So as a brief introduction to me, uh, I'm one of the directors at uh, Granted Consultancy, which was acquired uh, 18 months ago by Ryan, which is a global tax firm, billion dollar uh, tax authority. And the reason that we were acquired is that Granted has been around for over 10 years now, and we've secured over 250 million pounds in funding in that time with an average success rate of 63%. So we are very much industry leaders in securing grants. And our approach is quite straightforward. We like to talk to entrepreneurs about what's coming next, find out what they want to fund, what that innovation is, how long's the timeline, and try and match that with the relevant grant. And one of the things I'll touch upon uh, during this presentation is to not necessarily follow the herd when there are lots of people all going for the same grant because some grants have very good success rates because they're a little bit more niche and some have very low success rates because they're more broad so it's all about navigating that grant environment to make sure that you go for the one that you have the most chance of success with and please feel free to connect with me on linkedin uh, my link's in there and you can find me very easily as well. So public funding is essentially split into two cohorts. We have formula schemes and awards and we have general schemes and awards. The difference between the two is that general schemes and awards are more likely to help you in your day to day. So they could be energy grants, they could be cost of living grants, they could be disability grants, they could be grants from your local council, for example. So there's no competition element to those. It, it's more needs assessed. Whereas formula schemes and awards are your general grants. And as you can see here, right now, there is a commitment of 108 billion pounds going into formula schemes in the UK alone. So there is a massive opportunity for anybody that's based in the UK to access government funding, but they are competition awards. So you will be judged based upon the criteria of the award, based upon the criteria of, of the, the whole ethos of that award. And then there are judges that will then tally up the scores to work out whether you're going to get that fund or not. And these are your typical bodies that these grants come from. So a lot of you may have heard of Innovate UK, absolutely fantastic organization. And they do lots and lots and lots of grants on a monthly, sometimes weekly, yearly basis. So they are more known for their tech grants. So if you're in developing some sort of technology, whether that's a hardware, a software, even a physical device, it could be an e-bike, it could be um it could be some sort of food it, it it really is all encompassing when they say technology because it has to be something that you are innovating to to create a new product so that's where the definition of innovate comes from you then have sbri this is typically for your medical awards so if you're in cancer therapeutics if you're developing new types of treatments if you're doing anything where the end benefit is felt by a patient then the SBRI is probably your better route to getting funding so anybody in that medical sphere that's the one to look out for we then have options from Europe so I put Eureka here Eureka is amazing because they offer grants to UK companies despite Brexit so if you're a business in the UK, you can still access EU grant funding today. There's just one additional hurdle. And that hurdle is to partner with another R&D firm in another EU state. Now, Eureka is unique because it doesn't necessarily have to be Europe. Included in Eureka's um, uh, 
list of countries that you're able to partner with, they include Singapore, they include Israel, they include South Africa, they include uh, Switzerland. Uh, it, it's not just EU countries that can apply for this funding. So Eureka is amazing. And there's a few funds I'll, I'll tell you guys about very shortly. We then have the European Innovation Council. Now, I want to make this very, very clear for everybody watching this today. These types of grants are for companies that are spending big. If you want to go for EIC, for example, their accelerator program, you need a project of a minimum size of about 10 million. If your project is not 10 million in its, in its development cycle, forget it. EIC is not for you. They are looking for those really hyper massive projects. And mm. it's a very long process to get funding from the EIC as well, you, typically over a year. So I wouldn't recommend EIC unless you're doing that sort of hyper project. In the bottom right there, we've got DEFRA. DEFRA for farming grants. That is a big, big uptick in the next 12 months. Uh, DEFRA has just signed another partnership with Innovate UK, and that means that they will be collaborating together on grant funding. This is big news for anybody in farming. So Agritech, clean tech, even uh, those two elements, DEFRA is going to be your best friend for that kind of funding. And then we've got things like the Department of Education, Department of Justice, De Department of Defense. Amazingly, they have their own personal uh, grants as well. So do make sure you're following your relevant departments uh, based on your, your company and your business. And very finally, I've put Scottish Enterprise in there. I should have put Welsh Enterprise and, and Northern Ireland Enterprise. But there are regional bodies for grants as well. And one of the big things out of the election was that there's going to be a massive investment in Wales. So anybody starting up in Wales right now is going to be uh, really inundated with options for grant funding. Scottish Enterprise has been around a lot longer and they do have very good funding options available, usually a little bit smaller and the same for Northern Ireland in, in that respect as well. So these are the bodies that you want to follow on LinkedIn because that is where they post about the grants. LinkedIn, uh, sometimes Twitter or X, um, sometimes Facebook, but LinkedIn is your best source for finding out about new grants. So there are a few things that I want everybody to consider because grants aren't as simple as applying and getting a, a check in the post. A lot of the grants available in the UK require match funding. And it's, it's a topic that I don't think anybody has properly explained. And I want to explain that in very simple terms for you guys today. So if I take, for example, uh, a very common grant, the Innovate Smart Grant, which is a 70% match funded grant. What that means is that you can have a project size maximum of half a million, but only 70% of that is going to be given to you as grant funding. So that'd be a maximum of £350,000 as your grant funding. The way that's paid out is that when you start the project, you get nothing. You have to fund Q1 of your project because you get no grant funding up front whatsoever. At the end of Q1, you will then be required to submit the invoices and the PAYE slips for what you've, uh, you've done in Q1. And 30 days later, you're rebated 70% of those costs. So the best way to look at this is it's quarterly arrears that you're getting funding. So what you will need to do as a business is be able to cash flow that because you don't need to go and get 350,000 or half a million to start your grant. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is that over the course of 12 to 18 months, you will spend half a million pounds in quarters broken up along that road but you'll be receiving back 350K along the way. So what you just need to do is firstly be able to cash flow Q1. And then obviously that rebate from Q1 can be reinvested into Q2, Q2 into Q3, Q3 into Q4, 
so on and so forth, but you will need to top it up along the way. But one of the best things you can do to support that is actually um, the win itself, because you've now won a nationally recognized competition. You want to put that on all of your social media, really pump it out there to the to everybody in the world, because that is something that's super special. Um, get your SEIS approval, get your EIS approval, because you will now be uh, your door is going to be inundated with investors wanting to speak to you and to invest in your business, because now the risk factor for them is significantly reduced by the fact that you've won a grant. So these are really important elements that you want to consider before you apply for a grant um, and make sure that that match, fund, uh, match funding element is ticked off. Also understand the deadlines of these grants. They can come by very, very quickly. Um, so sometimes you've only got four weeks to apply, maybe six weeks to apply. Don't leave it to the last minute because these are time intensive applications. We, for example, typically spend about four to six weeks per application. So if that takes a, a company like us who are pros at this four to six weeks, just imagine how much time it's going to take you. So really make sure you invest that time properly. Have you got the team? Before you apply for any grant, you need to have your CEO, your project lead or project manager, your CFO, which could just be your accountant, but you still need to name them. And if you're in technology, you need to have a CTO as well. And they have to be in-house. You can't outsource that. You can't have someone from the other side of the world be in that category. They need to be in-house. And when you win the grant, they will also need to be on PAYE within the company for you to claim back for their salary. So just make sure you've got that team locked down. And then finally, capitalization. All these grants are there to try and make money. They want to see that your project is going to make as much money as possible. So if you've got the potential to sell and your route to market is, is showing that you could potentially get to the tens of millions in revenue year on year, you are absolutely in the right ballpark. There are a few grants open right now. Um, there is the Innovate UK loan, which is excellent. There's the Smart Grant that's reopening in a, in a week or so's time. Uh, there are SBRI grants that you can see in the middle there that have just launched. And there are a whole load of other grants as well. I mean, I, I don't have the time of day to go through all of those with, with you. But of course, if you wanted to investigate, we can always have a conversation. So the impacts of the election, and this is kind of where I'm going to round off this section. Um, the big thing is that a lot of the funding that's available in the next 12 months has been ring fenced. So things like your smart grant, things like the SBRI calls, things like um, the DEFRA calls. Um, there's a whole load of farming grants coming out in September and October. These are all ring fenced until April 2025. The impacts of the new government won't be seen until after 20, April 2025, because there's a whole load of things that need to happen in that time for any change to occur. But there will be a new CEO of Innovate UK that's going to be announced quite literally any day now. And with that, there will be a shift to more regionally focused grants. So we've seen even in the last few months, there are des designated grants for Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, for the Midlands, for Hertfordshire, for North East England, for um, there was one for Yorkshire as well. So there is a really big shift towards regionally focused grants. And I think that's only going to continue moving into this next period of grant enjoyment, I suppose. So. The key thing for you guys now is to watch out for those grants because they have a significantly higher chance of success of winning. In comparison to an Innovate UK smart grant that has right now a 2% success rate, if you go for a regional grant, the likelihood there is probably closer to 40, 50%. So the Northeast England grant that was out about a month ago had a massively high success rate. And that's because there are only so many businesses in, in that particular region. There are only so many businesses within that region that also meet the criteria. So 
look out for these regionally focused grants because they are the ones you want to put your time and effort into. The broader grants are so hard to win right now because there are a lot of companies throwing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications. Uh, Smart Grant from January to April was 1,900 applications with 46 companies that were funded. So you can see that actually, do you want to spend six weeks of your time on that or focus on a regional grant? My recommendation would be a regional grant, but you have to make that decision for yourself, of course. So there's going to be a big focus on farming, clean tech, green tech. Space is another big one. Um, I'm speaking to someone about the space grants later on today. Um, international collaborations with Singapore, Taiwan, uh, India was last year. I'm hoping that's coming back. There's a big focus on that regional connection, uh, international connection rather, as well. And of course, MedTech being your other big one. So as a conclusion, the checklist that you guys want to have when you apply for a grant is have you got that registered company? Have you got the team? Have you got a protectable IP? Have you got bleeding edge innovation or concept? Does it have the potential for high commercialization? Do you have letters of intent or support from your target market to really prove that there is a need for your product? Clear route to market, is it B2B, is it B2C? You need to have that clear definition of your route to market. Can you match fund? Super important. And similarly, partnerships. Are you partnering with another company? Sometimes it's a very good thing, especially if they've got expertise that maybe you don't have to finish your product. It's a super thing to do. So very final thought, do a Luke Skywalker because you will fail. You will all fail in a grant application. It is expected for you to fail in a in a grant application. And what I want you to do is to stay resilient and go again, because there will be another opportunity and you will get to wield the force. So make sure that you do that for your business because you will get that opportunity to win. So thank you so much for your time, everyone. Um, that's the end of my presentation and uh, I'll pass it back to Ollie. That was wonderful, uh, uh, particularly the uh, Star Wars bit at the end, David. That was uh, awesome. Thank you very much for coming in today. Um, we've had a lot of talks recently in various startup stand-up meetings about grants, their effectiveness and how founders find them and how the general election could impact them. So it's good to have you on. It's timely. Um, I want to put the questions out to the people in the room today. Um, any questions for David this morning on UK Grant? Stuart. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks, David. That's brilliant. Um, so I've got directly a question um, about your team. Um, mm -hmm. It said we need an in-house CEO, CFO and CTO in the case of a technical company, which we are. Yeah. Um, so I am the CEO, CEO and the CTO mm -hmm. against my will. But you know, it's it's the way things are going at the moment. I'm 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 stuck as see. I'm a technical founder, yeah, and um, you know, an, an unwilling CEO. So have I got both of those roles covered, or have I now got a hole because I'm both of those things? Um, in that scenario, you're 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 covered because yeah. you can put yourself down as multiple roles. But the kind of magic number is to name three people on the application. Yeah. So you can have multiple um, roles in the business. But as long as you can name two or three people, uh, well, three really, uh, three people on that application, then you're in safe territory. All right. So three people on PAYE. Yes. Yes. And just to caveat that, um, even if they're not on PAYE when you apply for the grant, that's fine. But when you win the grant, you would have to make that transition. Oh, that's good to know. All right. Yeah. So we don't have to. No. Stuff. You could have someone in mind that you've wanted to bring in for years and then apply for the grant six, nine months later, you win the grant. You can then bring them in house, put them on PAYE and the grant's going to pay for their salary, of course. That sounds good. So our, our situation is that you know, two, two of our main people are myself and my wife. 
Mm. We're not in PAYE. We you know we we own we own the company. Mm. Um, we're saving ourselves lots of um, you know admin and costs yeah. by not paying ourselves. We don't we don't draw a salary, but we could. Um, so we'd look at sort of the the payoffs. I mean, yeah. that would be a good reason to be pay, PAYE. Yeah. That would be spot on. Reason. Yeah, spot on. All right, thank you. That's, that's really good. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, any additional questions for David this morning, Peter? Hello, David. That was very good. Um, yeah, I've been tackling, trying to tackle grants for many years now. Um, one of the things that uh, has always been pushed towards us is uh, KTN, or is it now called Innovate UK Connect? Um, yes. And and also, certainly many years ago, they used to say, well, contact these people. They'll help you with uh, finding um, somebody to match fund with you. Mm. Um, but it never seems to be the case. And... Um, Everybody's left on their own uh, to their own to find, um, uh, and it's probably harder finding the match somebody to match fund with than it is to actually get the grant in some ways. And, yeah. and especially, I think, if you're not um, a university uh, uh, a spin out, yeah. university spin outs seem to have a, a higher priority than, um, than, than normal businesses, shall we say, where most people have probably been to university. Mm. Um, so what are your thoughts relating to um, Innovate UK Connect? Are they just a, a talking shop or are they useful? They're, they're, that's a great question, Peter. Um, they are useful, but they've they've shifted their focus recently more to outsourcing that advice. Um, I noticed that, that very recently a client of mine was being referred to another company to talk about loans and debt financing and things like this. And I thought... Okay, I see what's happening here. They're they're trying to outsource some of that expertise, but that doesn't help you with match funding, of course. So, the match funding element is one of the toughest barriers to entry for the grants. There are actually two companies I can recommend that would help with that, and I I recommend them very regularly. There's one called Rocking Horse, and there's another one called Spark Capital S P R K Capital. Um, these guys specialize in match funding loans. So what they will do is um, potentially they could give you that letter of support for when you apply for the grant saying, we will give you the funding for match funding if you win this grant. So they can give you that letter of support. Um, similarly, when, when you do get that loan, they'll give you that cash injection at the beginning. And essentially you service that with the grant money that's coming in. Um, but they do a relatively decent interest rate. I know Rocking Horse is around 7%. So it's not something absolutely ridiculous. Um, but they will be able to help with that match funding portion quite quickly. So if you got a grant win today, you've got, I think it's 60 days to accept it from Innovate UK, for example. Um, Rocking Horse, the quickest I've seen them accept a loan was 48 hours. So... <laughs> It's, if you it's, were, funny, yeah, it's funny you should say it, David. Um, uh, Dominic at Spark Capital was a friend of Startup to Stand Up and did a, a very, very good talk, um, Peter, a while back. I think it was December 22. Um, and that was around grants and R&D tax credits, where someone's going to put uh, R&D tax credit in and they will bridge finance it until they're... they're uh, the R and D tax emission comes through. So, oh. if you want an intro, Peter, I can do an intro to Dominic Boy. He's the founder of Spark Capital. Yeah. All right. But do you, do you not have to have your um, uh, when you put your application? You've got to say where your match funding is coming from. That's right. So you've so, got to get all these things in place beforehand. No, not necessarily, because you still got to win it. Um, I mean, the 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 best way to Define because when you put in an application for the grant, you can't say future tense, I'm going to raise or I'm going to get a loan. Um, it has to be definitive. So, in that answer, you need to say, I've got the funds and they're being secured by Spark Capital, for example. So, you can have that conversation with Spark, but you don't necessarily need to sign the terms until you win the grant. So you can be definitive in the application, but because there's that six six month wait period, you can you can cross that bridge once you've got the success and the green light, which I would recommend is the best approach. And the, my other question was about um, uh, using services like yourself. I mean, 
I'm in a position where I don't have any capital at the moment, but um, uh, to to get your help, I would need to have funds to do that. Is that correct? That's that's right. Yes. So there, there's quite a big variety of, of different grant writing options. Um, we're probably more premium, I would say, because we we do write the whole thing on behalf of our clients and then submit it and, and obviously hopefully win it. Um, but we do charge a fee respective of the amount of time that our writers are putting into it. So, for example, Smart Grant, we would charge £7,000 as our upfront fee with a 7% success fee. So we're definitely not the cheapest, but we're also definitely not the most expensive. Um, and to that point, um, there are lots of options available, and I would recommend to go and research them all because some will give you partial support, some won't write anything at all, um, and some will do the, the vast majority of the writing. So it's really worth just doing a bit of homework on the different varieties. Um, you might get really lucky and find someone that is absolutely perfect for you and they've got exactly the right skill set to put an application together in your industry that's going to be really, really high quality. If you get that, that's magic. Um, those are very rare opportunities. So we are one option, but there are plenty to look at. And the way I operate and the way my team operates is we're very happy to have that chat regardless of if you use us or not. But it's always good for you to know what options you have and what grants may or may not be available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, any final questions for David this morning? Or have we exhausted everything? I think um, there's a lot of positivity flying around at the moment, particularly with what you said about regional grants mm. that's, that's i would like the um the slides you present this morning if you could send them to me please yep. david because we want to send them um out to our uh founder community right and put them in our uh circle platform as well for everyone to to see my pleasure um but yeah i'm i'm sort of a little bit encouraged by what what i'm seeing at the moment what i'm hearing um, and it'd be good to see how these regional grants filter down mm. and, and the success rates, looking at the success rates, because that is one of the big, you know, the the, the time uh, reward things are massive on this. Um, do I spend that on, on doing a grant application or, you know, is my time better spent elsewhere? Peter. You're on mute. With regards to regional grants, uh, grants are they being done through the combined authorities, or do they have any links to the combined authorities? Is it just straight through the in Innovate UK? Most mostly through Innovate UK, to be fair. Um, there are a few that are through the the authorities, but they're few and far between, frankly. Um, Innovate UK is your best bet for the regional grants. Thanks. Excellent. So um, thank you all for coming along this morning. Um, you're going to get a lot. Oh, uh, Sid. Sid's got his hand up. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to add on to that, um, David. There's quite a lot of levelling up grants as well, aren't there, regionally? So as well as all the Innovate stuff, it's it's worth all of you having a look at your local council levelling up economic department. They're not particularly large grants, but it all helps. So you know, have a look at that route as well. Definitely. Yeah. And, and and just be aware of the name change because Labour's deleting the phrase levelling up. <laughs> Good show. And, and just, I guess, David, one more point on, on a practical point. Um, when you put the application in, mm. you talked about having the, um, you know, the, the match funding. Is it OK for an entrepreneur to say, I've got an investor, they'll do that. And then in the background, then you go and have the conversation with, with other people. Because I think don't, yeah. don't let that stop you putting in your application. Put it in. Say you've got an investor, yeah. whether you have or you haven't. <laughs> and then when you win it, panic and go and get the loan and go and get the investor. Couldn't couldn't agree more. Yeah, cool. I mean, I'd say 90% of people I speak to are in the middle of a raise. And that raise is going to go on for another six months minimum. And you're going to find out about the grant in about six months time. So yeah. absolutely couldn't agree more. And I know lots and lots of investors who once approached by someone with a, a grant in their back pocket, get very excited. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I don't know if they still do that with SCIS, but there was a period where you had to have the investor in place before you 
were given the SCIS. And again, you know, you've just got to be smart about, you know, playing within the rules, but work them to your advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Um, wonderful to see everyone this morning. And thank you, uh, David. You're going to get a lot of um, love, uh, shout outs and big ups on uh, LinkedIn and various other uh, social media platforms this morning and later today. Um, so, and you're welcome back anytime. It, it was good oh. to have you. A very good talk and uh, lots of thanks and appreciation. All thanks right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back with my yes. lightsaber ready. Yeah. Excellent. Really insightful. <laughs> thanks, David.